Now, a few years back, the grocery chain Kroger's fired two former Christian employees in Arkansas after they refused to wear logos representing the rainbow gay pride flag. Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton didn't forget about that when Kroger's CEO came in front of the Judiciary Committee begging Republicans to just instantaneously support their latest merger. They expect Republicans who are traditionally more supportive of free enterprise to come to their defense. And I've cautioned them for years that if they silence uh, conservatives and center-right uh, voters across the country, if they discriminate against them in their company, they probably shouldn't come and ask Republican senators to carry the water for them whenever our Democratic friends want to regulate them or block their mergers. I'm sorry that's happening to you. Best of luck. Joining us now is Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, this is a lot bigger than just about one merger in one grocery chain, is it not? I mean, this the trans agenda and the corporate, you know, woke agenda is infiltrating every aspect of corporate life through ESG and other liberal initiatives. Yeah, Laura, very much so. A lot of these large publicly traded corporations have, in effect, become an arm of the Democratic Party. In this case, you had Kroger that didn't just discriminate against two Bible-believing Christians in Arkansas, firing them for refusing to wear what they perceived as a uh, gay pride symbol um, and being sued by the Trump Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and settling it. You also had them uh, forcing their employees to go through things like critical race theory training or gender ideology based training. You've seen this in Georgia where Brian Kemp stood up to Delta and Coca-Cola for falsely uh, defaming the law that they passed last year that made it easier to vote but harder to cheat as we just saw in the big turnout. Ron DeSantis standing up to Disney World. Corporations for a long time ha have come to Republican politicians and expected us to stand up for them since we are traditionally more friendly towards the free enterprise system to say the least than Democrats. But when they do things like silence our voters the way big tech does, or in this case at Kroger, discriminate against our voters, they need to think twice because I, I certainly am not going to do it. And I've been warning them for years privately, and I just finally said it publicly, oh. that when you come here and you expect <laughs> us to defend you after you attack our voters, my position yeah. is going to be, I'm so sorry that's happening to you. I wish you all the best. Well, I think it's not even, a, a, it's not even an open question at all that big business is now aligned almost 100 percent with Democrats and every single social issue. I mean, almost every single one. It's certainly on climate change. But, Senator, I also want to get into what's happening with this TikTok issue, because a number of states across the country are going after TikTok on security grounds. You got Indiana's AG just sued them for exposing minors to sexual content. But the White House is apparently considering some type of uh, agreeing to some type of concessions, national security concessions supposedly made by the parent company. Watch. Maryland and South Dakota became the latest two states to ban TikTok on state devices. Is the federal government, is the president considering doing something here? So um, I'm not going to comment on uh, TikTok while a CFIUS, uh, the Committee on Foreign Investment in, in the United States, uh, review is ongoing. The Biden administration is focused on, ch on challenge of certain, of certain countries, uh, including chi China. Yeah, well, TikTok told Fox Business that they're confident that they're on a path to fully satisfy all reasonable, underline reasonable, U.S. national security concerns. Senator, why should TikTok be present in the United States at all, in any way, shape, or form, given what we know about ByteDance and the CCP? Shouldn't be present in the United States, Laura. Um, there's a lot of things that you just point out there that are bad about TikTok, the way they expose minors to violent, depraved, degrading sexual material or young girls to uh, videos about body image issues, stuff that they would never let Chinese teenagers see, uh, or the risk to your data security and your privacy. But if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, why in the world would we allow a Chinese-owned company, which has to answer to the Chinese communists, to uh, be one of the largest media platforms in our country? Would we ever have allowed Soviet Russia to own a major newspaper or a major broadcast network during the Cold War? Of course we wouldn't have. And it's very disappointing that the Biden administration is sending signals that they might tolerate TikTok's presence here in the United States, despite the grave threat it poses to all Americans. Senator, are you confident that Mitch McConnell's going to beg off of this uh, omnibus spending bill? 
It sounds like that's the direction we're going. I mean, he's made the point publicly that the Democrats have spent hundreds of billions of dollars on their domestic priorities over the last two years. It would be a folly for Republicans to agree to spend even more on those Democratic yeah. domestic priorities just as the ransom to get the money that our troops need. If the Democrats continue to insist on that, I see a short-term spending bill into the new year when the new House Republican majority can provide us some fire support over in the Senate yeah. and we can get a better bill, a better deal for what the American people voted for. Senator, thank you.